Project Zomboid, a game that asks just one question, how will you die? It's very easy to dismiss a game that spent 10 years in early access and still looks like something trying to emulate an early version of The Sims. But as my brother always used to say, you shouldn't look at a fire while you're poking it. And judging this game on its looks alone would be a mistake. For underneath the hood lies the most immersive zombie survival game you're likely to find. To highlight this game on my channel, I decided to do a simple 28 days later challenge. But the big question is, since I never finished the challenge, did Shiny B survive for 28 days? On day one of the zombie apocalypse, Shiny B began her journey in a trailer park somewhere in the middle of Moldra. She had chosen to take the negative traits of being a smoker and a slow reader, but the occupation of a burglar, a fairly new player friendly build, which starts with the added bonus of being able to hotwire a car. With very little of use to be found in the starting trailer, our journey headed north. It's here that we had our first bit of luck stumbling across the How to Start Generators magazine, a key item when the electricity eventually goes out in Project Zomboid. From there we looted what houses we could, finding bags and clothing and a few essential tools. But it was getting close to five o'clock and when the night comes in we needed to find a place to put our head down. Exhausted from day one's activities we finally managed to get to the farm. A secluded enough spot that should be a good place to build a base of operation and survive for the next month. The following day we attracted some unwanted attention from a wandering zombie that broke in through the living room. A stark reminder that our base was going to need some work. It was on day three while we was looting we came across an ambulance in good working condition and it's key. So with the freedom of the open road Shiny did what any of us would do in an apocalypse and drove to the pub. A few beers and a couple of smokes later and Shiny set back to the farm. Having already lost the front tyre of the ambulance, perhaps the few beers before setting off home would help with Shiny's driving skills. Her journey was a success, with enough curtains to conceal any light or movement from a distance, and Shiny loot in the pub, she had much of what she was going to need. But to survive long term, some risks were going to have to be taken. Far from being able to sustain herself long term, on day five, Shiny B risked all. Armed with nothing but a metal pipe, she headed to a local warehouse. Amongst the treasure trove of goodies that she uncovered were all the things that she was going to need to start farming. Shiny's only option to survive long term will mean cultivating and growing her own food sources. Unfortunately, this warehouse had everything necessary to do just that. On day six and seven, things were relatively relaxed. Shiny spent her time barricading the downstairs windows and used the weather to her advantage by planting her own crops. But it was on day eight that she had a visit from the helicopter. This event can happen any time from the sixth day onwards in Project Zomboid. This in turn will bring every zombie to your position for dinner. And unprepared, it can be easy to be overwhelmed. So Shiny's strategy was simple. Get as far away from the base as possible. Using this event to her advantage, she was able to manipulate the hordes away from her base and also away from a local gas station. In the process, she hotwired a prison bus, which was a useful mod that I installed should Shiny wish to continue her journey beyond the 28 days and move to the next town. Loading the bus up with fuel and parking the van somewhere easy to retrieve later on, she headed home. Killing zombies in Project Zomboid takes time, patience, awareness. But by standing her ground and searching through almost every shed in Moldra, Shiny Bee finds it, the generator. With electricity and the option to refrigerate fresh produce, a chance to survive indefinitely presents itself. On day 11, Shiny hooks up the generator, ensuring she can still play her Atari ST when the power goes out. Much of the next few days are spent fortifying the farm. When the power goes out, the generator will make some noise and it's wise to make a few exit strategies should a wandering horde become interested. Gaining experience in Project Zomboid is slow and more skill in carpentry is going to be needed if we're to build better walls. Before heading back out into the land of the walking dead, Shiny Bee uses all the leather and denim strips she's been cutting from all the dead zombies clothing. 
A scratch or a cut can easily lead to death. So taking advantage of a few extra points in armor and using a needle and thread, she had something to her protection. Day 13 and a well-rested, well-fed shiny bee set out to gain some experience. By dismantling TVs, beds and furniture over the next few days, Shiny gains valuable experience in both carpentry and electronics. And with a level 4 crafting skill, on day 16 she's able to craft better walls and rain collectors to save on some water. But even with all the pots and pans outside, by the 17th day it still hadn't rained. And we relied on the water for our crops in hope for a good harvest. Little more could be done about the weather, but the abandoned van that we had left on the other side of town would be a bigger help than the bus. The small warehouse located just north of the pub had potential for good loot, and the ambulance that Shiny had left there earlier would make for a good distraction should we need to draw any attention away. But it was reasonably clear, other than lacking the tools that we would need to break in, we could come back here later and loot this place easily. Day 19 and we finally got the rain we needed, filling up every pot we could and leaving all of our vegetables well watered. With the warehouse clear, Shiny broke in with the blowtorch and the welder's mask, doing what she does best, stealing stuff, and the door proved to be no problem at all. Among a myriad of useful items, Shiny found an antique oven, a nice way to cook all the meals she will ever need with wood instead of burning fuel and electric. On day 26, and Shiny's enjoying a wash in the rainwater outside. The crops are starting to bear fruit, and so ends the journey that I never completed. Shiny did make it through 28 days of the apocalypse and is of course ready to move on to bigger and better things. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons. And I do hope that shining a small spotlight on this game inspires a few of you to give it a try. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see ya.